Hey guys, happy Friday. I hope everyone's doing well and you guys know what day it is. It's the the uh, day that I post my videos to my series called Crimes Through the Times. And this series is a lot more different than my True Crime Tuesdays videos because with these cases I try to cover a lot more vintage cases and that's what I'm going to be covering with my Crimes Through the Times series. Now my last Tuesday video I was talking about David Harker and oh that guy was a nut job about how he brutally murdered a woman and then ate her. Ugh. So today we're going to be talking about the case of Mary Jane Barker and you guys better prepare yourself because this is about to be one wild ass ride because I was researching this and I was like what the hell. So, have most of you or any of you heard about this case? It's a very, very bizarre case. And it's honestly one of the most bizarre cases I've ever heard of. And so let me start off with the backstory as we get into the case. And so, Mary Jane Barker, she was born on February 28th of 1953 in Belmar, New Jersey. And Belmar was a borough in Camden County. New Jersey and it was incorporated as a town on April 21st of 1926. In the 1950s, Belmar was a relatively small town of about 5,000 people and it was a community where nothing really happened and everybody knew everybody. So uh, Mary Jane, she was the youngest child to Frank Barker and Mrs. Frank Barker and I tried to find out what the wife's name was but all I could find was that she was known as Mrs. Frank Barker. So, Mary Jane was, like I would mentioned, she was the youngest child in her family, and she had two older siblings named Carol Ann, kind of reminds me of the Poltergeist movie, and she was around 11 or 12, and then she had an older brother, and his name was Frank Barker Jr., and he was around 9 or 10 years old. So, Mary Jane, she was the baby of the family, and everybody absolutely loved her, and she was loved by all of her friends. And she was just a precious child. She loved to play with her family, with her friends, and she loved animals. And it seemed like the Barker family just had a very picture-perfect type of family at this point. But unfortunately, it would end in a very tragic way for the Barker family. On Monday, February 25th of 1957, this was a normal day for the family and three-year-old Mary Jane Barker. And she was super bored, and she asked her parents if she can go and play with the neighbor named Maria Farida. And this was around 10.30 in the morning. And it was pretty common for children to play with other kids without any supervision. This child named Maria Farida, she was actually six years old. And so Mary Jane, she ended up playing with Maria and her four-month-old Cocker Spaniel puppy. And this was around 12 p.m. or 1 p.m. that afternoon. And she just vanished like out of nowhere like in thin air she just completely vanished so police they were then notified by the Barker family that Mar um, Mary Jane was missing and this immediately started an enormous search for Mary Jane because like I said she was three years old at the time and this was the biggest search that there's ever been done in the Morrow area and the police immediately presumed that Mary Jane had been kidnapped. And this caused a lot of fear to ripple through the community because this was a place where crime never happened. Nothing ever happened here. And from my research, I could see the community of Belmar at that time, there was like little, maybe like two, zero to two crimes at all that entire time. And police, they were really concerned when they got the call for Mary Jane's disappearance. Because this is an innocent child that has gone missing and no one knows where she went. And she was three years old at the time. She just up and left. On February 26th of 1957, just one day later, police ended up actually finding footprints that belonged to a grown adult, a young child, and a little puppy. And these footprints were by a nearby stream. What was even more alarming is that the police, they noticed that the shoes for the child actually remember, resembled the size and shape of Mary Jane's shoes that she had been wearing the day that she had disappeared. It was around this time that the police realized they're not uh, dealing with a child that just wandered off and vanished. They're dealing with a child that was abducted. So when it comes to child abduction, especially in Mary Jane's case, and it, with her being her age and everything, everyone began to realize that she was in grave danger. 
Like this is a four year old little girl who's now missing. And what really confused me is that they started looking for this kidnapper, right? But nobody saw Mary Jane disappear with the dog and no one saw the kidnapper. So it's just like, how do you know who to search for if, you know, you don't know who you're looking for? It's just, it confused me. I was like, hmm, you know who to look for. So when police, they announced publicly that they were looking for a kidnapper that had taken Mary Jane and the puppy, this terrified the people in Melbourne, Bel Belmar, New Jersey. They were terrified. And they were worried about the safety of their own children. What, what if this unknown predator was still outside? What if this person was still watching the community, the town, the families? So parents, they were not allowed their children to be outside and play by themselves. They had to be constantly supervised by other adults or older children. And this would even go so far as to force the children to only play in supervised groups so that, you know, no one is being unsupervised and left alone. And I'm not sure why this wasn't a thing prior to Mary Jane's disappearance, but I don't know. Maybe it's the time period. I wasn't a lot, a lot bleh, around back then, obviously, but I, it just blows my mind that that would happen. So parents, they began worrying that there was actually a child predator out there that had been watching the children and looking for a perfect opportunity to snatch poor Mary Jane. So this actually happened. Like people actually started getting this fear whenever the police announced that they had found an extra set of adult footprints next to Mary Jane's footprints and the puppy's footprints. The search for Mary Jane was actually considered one of the largest case like searches in the entire New, the entire southern New Jersey and this was where hundreds of volunteers and police officers began searching for Mary Jane and this just on the first night alone of her search there was 200 local volunteers that were actually searching for Mary Jane herself which is absolutely incredible to me because that's 200 people within one day when people start talking more pu uh, publicly about Mary Jane's case, word spread more and people wanted to help search for her more. And this happened all over the county and the state themselves. The state itself, they wanted to search for her everywhere they possibly could. Eventually, a search party for Mary Jane Barker increased to almost 2,000 people. 2,000. That's a lot. That's a hell of a lot of damn people, like, searching for this little girl. That's a lot of people. So... Her family was extremely heartbroken, obviously, because their daughter's missing, but they were abs like really, really grateful that the community was trying to help out as best they could to help find their daughter. Mary Jane's fourth birthday actually ended up coming and going on February 28th of 1957, and there was absolutely no clues as to where she could be. And it just, for the community, it just seemed like Mary Jane had just been swallowed by the earth. No one has seen her. There was no clues. She just poof vanished. So the day before Mary Jane's birthday, her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Frank Barker Jr., they actually went live on public television and they begged for the return of Mary Jane. They gave the abdu unknown abductor very specific instructions to leave the child at the nearest church. But... What if they're out of the state? That's, that's why I just don't get. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the supposed person of interest at the time. And his name was Vern. Vern. V-E-R-N. Lovering. And Vern, he was a 43-year-old floor sander. And he lived in the local area and was actually a convicted child molester. Which is disgusting to think about if you live in the local area and you have kids out there being unsupervised. Ew, what the fuck? So... When Mary Jane went missing, the police actually ended up questioning Vern, and he tells police that he actually was around the Barker residence that day that Mary Jane went missing. Well, hi, Riley. And this I found, like, to be super sketchy, because, like, what was he doing around the Barker residence? Was he walking around? Was he spying? Like, what was he doing over there? And so... 
I obviously thought, you know, like, did he see Mary Jane actually getting abducted herself? Like, what did he see if he was over there by the, by the, uh, family home? So, on February 28th of 1957, the FBI, they start doing their own investigation outside of the local police. And the, the search for Mary Jane Barker was just, started going over and being taken over by the police, not the police, the FBI. And just one day later on March 1st, which was Frank Barker Sr.'s birthday, the FBI, they started re-questioning Vern Lovering about Mary Jane Barker's disappearance. So apparently someone actually called the local police department and they had left an, un like, an anonymous tip as to something that, like, they left an unknown tip and the person had said something and called themselves Mary Jane's abductor. Es essentially, sorry, I got tongue-tied there. And the abductor, because I'm trying to use finger quotes because we don't know if this is legitimately her abductor, if there's just someone trying to BS the police system, they, they told the police that if they gave them, the abductor, $500 worth of ransom money, that he would release Mary Jane Barker. And at this point, the police, they have no other choice. So they're just like, let me just raise as much money as I can because they wanted to comply and do everything they said because they were worried that Mary Jane Barker would end up dead. And I'm saying he because it's pretty obvious by the footprints and everything that this had to have been a guy. A man had to have been with Mary Jane the puppy, but that's just me. I would love to know if you think a woman took her, but I personally believe that a man had taken her. So the police, they agreed to the ransom money and they begged the abductors to not act in haste or harm the child. And I'm using quotes because that's what was said. So things were extremely difficult for the Barker family, especially on February 28th and March 1st of 1957, because that would be Frank, Bark's, Frank, Frank Barker Sr.'s birthday was on March 1st and Mary Jane's was on February 28th. And they would always have a, a combined birthday celebration. And the family always did this. And I can honestly say this is like so heartbreaking for the family. Imagine all the birthdays that they are going to miss. If she's away and, you know, they wanted to celebrate the birthday with her, but she's missing. She's been kidnapped. Nobody knows where she is. And the police on March 1st of 1957, they informed the family that they are working on several major leads for the case. But... Unfortunately, these just came to dead ends. There wasn't anything concrete when it came to these leads. And it had to be so awful for the family to deal with, was with um, hearing that there were so many dead ends when it came to this case. So the FBI, they start treating, they start um, getting involved in the case and they start treating this case as a high profile missing persons case which is incredible and this was underneath the federal federal kidnapping act which had been in legisl legislation since 1932 with the kidnapping of charles lindenberg jr so the fbi they start searching nearby dumps and they want to see if there's a disposed body or any type of evidence that could have been tossed out into the dump and however these attempts they proved fruitless and there ended up being no evidence found and at this point the police started getting really worried for their safe for, for her safety she had to have been somewhere there her body wasn't found at any of those places they looked where could she possibly be she's with a strange person who knows where she is so on march 3rd of 1957 this was three days after mary jane's birthday Maria Ferretta, she went to her with her mother to this bank, vacant house, and it was a brand new home that had just been built. And I'm not sure why they went to it, but it was a house that was next door to theirs that had been previously purchased by Maria's aunt and uncle, Mr. and Mrs. Pat Vecchia. And Maria, as little girls want to do, and I probably would do this as a grown adult, you know, they want to explore. They want to look around the house, see what all there is. So Maria, she started traveling around the house and seeing all the different rooms and spaces just to look around and be a little nosy, you know? So 
she decided to open the three foot by five foot bedroom closet door and she just wanted to see what was inside so as she opened it up she was horrified to find that her missing puppy had just leapt out of the closet and was just so happy to see her she's like what the heck why are you here and that's when she found Mary Jane Barker's body her best friend found her body like that's so traumatizing especially because like she was six years old six or seven like, that's insane to think about so Mary Jane's body was actually found in a she was like sitting upwards but like her front part of her body like her torso area and everything above it was leaning forward and she had been in there for quite a while so they had noticed that she had been wearing the exact same clothing that she was wearing when she was missing and whoever put her in the closet must have placed her there recently with before leaving and the puppy had recently just been fed and had been let out which there was no poop or pee in the house and the puppy wasn't housebroken yet so they were surprised to see that there is not a mess in the house Prior to her being found, people in the local communities, they started searching abandoned houses. And apparently, they told law enforcement that there was no puppy that was inside that house that Mary Jane was in. What's even more bizarre is they even, like, no one even checked the closet that Mary Jane was in at that time. And this actually really confused me because it was stated prior that the reverend in the area, his name is Reverend Henry, oh no, Harry, sorry, Harry McIntyre had apparently locked the like looked in the bedrooms and he had stated that he never thought to check the closets in the bedroom <clears throat> and there was a volunteer firefighter his name was john reeves and he stated that he had searched that particular bedroom as well but he never looked in the closet because he didn't know anyone was there and john reeves believes that mary jane was there at that time but she was too terrified to say anything for to cry out for help because she was scared for her life. After further inspection, the police and fire department, they realized that the closet door had was actually unlocked and there was a screw that was loose on the outs on the inside of the door where Mary Jane was at that made it extremely difficult to be able to get out from the inside. On March 4th of 1957, forensic evidence investigators they forensic evidence investigators they performed an autopsy on mary jane's body and they were quite surprised to see that mary jane only had chocolate milk in her stomach and the chocolate milk was from the day that she went missing and it, what was really more bizarre is like the entire time that she was missing she had not she had not eaten at all so it was so weird as the investigators check her body, they notice that there's no indications of foul play or sexual assault. So, you know, she was actually kidnapped by someone and she was lured away from somebody. How, like, what was their motive? Why did they feel like they needed to do that? Like, what, what were they trying to gain out of it? And if she was actually kidnapped and, like I said, if she was, was she lured away for some type of a reason? Was she promised a puppy, a dog, like... A doll, maybe food, I don't know what's happening. So upon further examination, the de detectives on her case were able to actually conclude that she had lived in that closet for s three days without food or water while someone else had been feeding the puppy. Which confuses me because I'm like, why, why not feed both? But I mean, if you're holding someone hostage or whatever, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. The cl they inspect the closet she was locked in and they noticed that there's very visible claw marks like she had clawed it with her nails on the inside of the door and this was from where Mary Jane had been trying to escape out of the closet and the dog was still very energetic though police theorized that the pup was only put in the closet after Mary Jane was already in there so they picked up the puppy and put it in the um closet with mary jane detectives they take the sweet little puppy to the vet to study the contents of its stomach and to see why the puppy was still alive the vets they inspect the puppy and they decide that they're going to take the two-month-old puppy 
and they were going to euthanize it to examine, examine the, the stomach contents, which means they have to kill it. And I was so pissed off when I found out about this because I was like, why euthanize the dog? Like, what the hell is the point of that? Like, he just lived longer than Mary Jane, so why would you need to euthanize it? Just, just find out why, you know, he lived longer. He just did. I don't know. So, to the vets, it literally made no sense why Mar uh, Mary Jane died before the puppy did. The Camden County, New Jersey coroner at the time, who was named Robert J. Blake, he ruled that Mary Jane Barker's death had to have been an accident. And it was due to starvation and exposure. Like, exposure to the elements, I guess. This, somehow, this made me think that Mary Jane must have been lured away by accident or like lured away by someone or by accident she ended up in the closet somehow she ended up there and when the door had shut it had ultimately locked her from the inside and it's logical though that however due to this she wasn't able to get out she ended up having like they say dying of fright I'm thinking maybe she had like a heart attack or something because she was so scared but I have no idea what dying of fright means, really. <laughs> so Robert J. Blake, he was the he had a spokesperson that spoke to the public about Mary Jane, and he had stated in the like the spokesperson stated in a press conference that logically she would not have been able to suffocate because the hole that was in the door was big enough for her to breathe. On March 7th of 1957, the mayor of the town named Cornelius Devenal, he publicly ordered for all closets to end up having a door on the inside as well. So in case someone is trapped in there, they are able to get out. So once he stated this, it was absolutely mandatory. And almost right away, this change was implicated into all the new houses that were being built at the time. So what I'm going to tell you, you may recall from my previous boy in the box case this the calls from about his death that the okay so whenever the person came up and they found the body and everything they actually did not call he did not call the detectives or 911 or anything until after he heard about the Mary Jane Barker case he was like oh Mary Jane Barker maybe I probably should you know call this in there's a dead boy right here I might do that might do that so Mary Jane's case like I said was on the news it was on the radio everyone was talking about this point like this girl just died and no one knows how why like where did she, how what that's what everyone was saying was like what the heck is going on so if you haven't seen that boy in the box video that I had done please go check it out it was it's so interesting and it's a truly wild and bizarre case as well just like this one as well it's like so weird to me so as always at the end of my videos i'm sorry this is gonna be a short one at the end of my videos i always try to add my own personal thoughts and opinions and so i will say this is a very sad and bizarre case like when i ver i was researching it and i read about it i was like how does this happen how did this little girl end up in this house why was she alone? Why was she three years old and hanging out with a friend that was like six? They had the puppy there. She just vanished with the puppy. What happened? Like, what? What? How did she end up there? And why did it lock? You know, like, whenever she shut it, shut the door, does it lock automatically whenever, you know, you shut the door? Like, how did it lock? Did someone else lock her in there? And why was she, you know, just walking around that area by herself? How did she get lured in there? What did that guy say to her? Who was the person that was with Mary Jane? Who was the adult-sized shoes? And who was feeding the puppy in that abandoned house? Because it certainly wasn't Mary Jane. She's not old enough for that. So, another question is, was Mary Jane the girl with the grown man and the puppy that everyone had been seeing because if so that meant that she had been abducted and she had been lured away but who is this guy and why hasn't he been caught yet he's probably dead now unfortunately 
And another important question is, where was Maria during all of this? Like, why would, how did she get separated from Mary Jane? And did he try to lure away both of them? Or did he just try to lure away Mary Jane with the puppy? What, like, what happened? What happened there? So, ugh, I don't know. I'm so frustrated. I have so many questions and there's not enough answers. The only person that really knows what happened that day was Mary Jane herself and she passed away. And the person that was able to lure her away. And that person has not been publicly identified yet. So, as always, I would love to know what your guys' thoughts and personal and opinions are down below in the comment section. Please keep everything respectful. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please share with your friends if you enjoyed what I was talking about. Please get this case out more because no one I've seen has even talked about this case. And it deserves to be solved, my goodness. So, make sure, like I said, that you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you never miss a video. And don't forget about my True Crime Tuesday videos that I post every Tuesday and my Crimes of the Times videos that I post every Fridays. So, as that can be said, that was the case of Mary Jane Barker. And I truly hope that you guys enjoyed my video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys!